Are you interested in a new CO2 laser machine but are finding that the cost is outside your budget and then you find one that meets your required specs but then the cost to ship it to your address is another expense that you'd prefer to avoid? And then add on all the import duties, taxes and paperwork fees. Well if you like to build things then the solution is to buy your laser machine to your specifications in parts and you can build it in stages. Build it yourself, avoiding the high import and shipping fees and also giving you the enjoyment of building something for yourself. G'day, welcome to Matt's Workshop. This is the first video in a series that I'm going to be doing on building your own CO2 laser machine. Now the mechanical parts that I'll be using for this machine are coming from Cloudray Laser and you'll find their website www.cloudraylaser.com When building your own machine you have the opportunity to design it the size you want, to fit into the space you want but you also have the opportunity to choose the material that you want to build the frame out of and give it a unique and personal look. I've decided to use this aluminium T-slot for the frame of my machine and I'll briefly discuss the design and the plan for the machine but I'm not going to go into the entire build process of the frame with you and uh, that's basically because you have the opportunity to design a frame to suit your needs and your machine. The important parts that I'm going to be explaining are the mechanical assembly, the wiring and uh, also just some of the safety components that we need to be aware of. Some of the components that I'll use for this um, machine build will come from other suppliers and where possible I will provide a link to those components in the description below. So here on my channel I provide tips and tutorials for the CO2 laser and other project videos. If CO2 laser cutting and engraving is a hobby or a business of yours then consider subscribing and if you haven't already hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to be notified when I release new videos for this laser build as well as future videos on the CO2 laser. So building your own laser machine requires planning and there are a few things that you need to consider before you proceed to build. These are what material do you intend to cut or engrave on your new, on your new machine? For example, are you wanting to cut just on uh, plyboard or wood? Are you wanting to cut out MDF, engrave on leather, uh, acrylic? And also what thickness of the material do you want to cut? A cut? Do you need to cut 3mm stock or do you need to go to 6mm or 10mm? So the thickness of the material that you're intending to cut determines the power of the laser tube that you're going to require and also how fast it's going to be able to cut through that material. To help decide what power you need, this chart is a starting guide to the speed settings for the CO2 laser tubes. For example, have a look at acrylic. You can cut this material on a full range of the CO2 laser tubes from the 40 watt up to 150 watt and beyond. And you notice that on 40 watt to cut through 3 mm acrylic, the speed is approximately 10 mm a second. Whereas on 150 watt, this will cut through the material at 40 mm a second. And this is all dependent on power settings as well. However if you want to cut through a piece of 10 millimeter thick acrylic then a 40 watt laser may not be the right option for you because as you see here the speed needs to be reduced to less than 3 millimeters a second and then again the power needs to be able to be directed into that material effectively to be able to cut through it. On a 150 watt laser tube though it can cut through it at approximately 7 millimeters a second so another popular material to cut on the CO2 laser is plyboard or these uh, MDF boards. And these can be processed on a 40 watt laser at low speeds of about 7 millimeters a second and on the 80 watt at about 15 millimeters a second. So that's reducing the cutting time in half. So as you can see, choosing the right power for your new machine will ensure it's able to process and cut the material that you intend to use on it. Selecting the power of your laser tube impacts on the space required. For example, a 40 watt laser tube is only about 720 millimeters long and a 150 watt laser tube is approximately 1850 millimeters long. So you need to consider the size in order to determine the machine enclosure that you're going to need to build. Will you be designing your laser machine to house the laser tube that's longer than the machine enclosure like this or do you want the tube to be housed within the entire enclosure like this one? So once you've chosen the laser tube that you want in your machine, 
This also will determine what size power supply you're going to need to power it. So once you determine the power and size of the laser tube that you need, then you need to consider the size of the cutting area of the machine. And this will determine the dimensions of all the rail sets, the types of rails that you want to use, and it also defines the length of the timing belts and cable chain that you're going to need. So what thickness of material will you be processing? Will you just be doing thin sheets of material or are you going to need to place larger objects inside the laser as well to engrave on them or cut out of them? So this will include things like uh, the rotary attachment. Do you need room in your machine housing to be able to lower the Z axis down to put the, uh, the rotary attachment in? So this determines whether you require a Z axis lifting platform and do you want to manually adjust that axis with a screw or would you like an automatic lift screw set installed with the stepper motors and drivers so that you can control it from either your control panel or some manual push buttons. So there are other parts as well that you need to consider. The honeycomb bed, are you going to want that or do you want alloy blades for the material support? So there's so many things that are going into this planning to determine the entire size of the enclosure that you're going to need. You will also need to confirm that your supplier is able to ship the size tube that you need. And this is very important for the larger size laser tubes for they're prone to breaking in transit and some companies won't ship the large laser tubes separately. So with all that considered, uh, here's what I have planned for my CO2 laser build. Well here in my workshop I need to be able to cut acrylic and MDF board and I also need to be able to cut large sheets of material approximately 1200 by 600 millimeters if I can. So I've selected a CO2 laser with a range of 90 to 100 watt and uh, the cutting area is going to be 1300 by 900 millimeters. So I also want to be able to put large objects in it and also use the rotary axis. So I've opted to install the Z axis lifting bed using a CloudRay mechanical lift part set. So this will allow me to control the Z axis from the controller. I also want to provide videos for this channel and so far I've been concentrating on the Rueda brand of controller. So for a bit of diversity and to be able to provide some future videos and tutorials on a different controller, I've selected the Troken 708S. So the reason I've chosen the Troken controller is so that I can demonstrate it because it is an affordable option to a lot of people. It has great functionality and is able to have add-ons like the Ultimate Air Assist and the Z-axis control and it comes with its own software but I'm still able to use my favourite software, Lightburn. Some of the final features and nice additions have not been finalised yet but uh, the important considerations for the components have been made and now let's have a look at the enclosure. So once you've decided on the specifications for your machine then you need to plan for the enclosure. And the CloudRay website has all the dimensions of the main components so you can design your enclosure. You will need to consider the material that you wish to use for the machine's enclosure and always consider the safety of yourself and others when creating your design. Especially take care selecting fire resistant materials for your enclosure within the path of travel of the laser beam. We don't want uh, the uh, enclosure to catch fire or for it to pass out of the enclosure and for things in the surrounding environment to be damaged. So thanks for watching. In the next video I'm going to show you how I planned the enclosure and uh, built that. I'm not going to go into all the detail of the frame build itself uh, but uh, if you have any questions you can leave comments below. Uh, all my social media links are in the description below and until next time take care. Cheers!